Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 27th of August of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And the most interesting and the most important updates are coming from the Pokrovsk direction, where the Russians managed to defeat the Ukrainians completely in the city of Novogrodovka and to establish complete control over this territory. As for now, we have three territory three areas inside of Novogrodovka the territory that was confirmed by videos and geolocations that the Russians managed to capture the territories that currently are in contested area according to different mappers and we have the final the last part of Novogrodovka that was captured just only according to pro-Russian sources this is very important now let's uh, start step by step first let's discuss the territory that was captured by the Russians and we have no doubts about this we have the video that was published, let's say, a few minutes ago before I start making this video. And in this video, we can see how the Ukrainians were FPV droning the Russians inside of the city of Novogrodovka. All these buildings, all these constructions were geolocated. And according to information we have, these episodes took place exactly in this part of Novogrodovka. So in the most northern part, northwestern part of the city. And uh, based on this video, we have adjusted the map along the tree lines, along this fortification area and along the railways. We didn't change the map inside of the city because uh, the Russians might get there, including through the city and of course along the railways. But the easiest way to get there, according to information we have, is along the railways. Now let's talk about the territory that was captured by the Russians according to different mappers. According to uh, pro-Ukrainian mappers Deep State, the Russians managed to answer the most northwestern part of the city and according to them the Russian presence was spotted in this point. Also according to Deep State and according to um, uh, pro-neutral mappers the Russians camp captured the central part and the Russians reached the bridge in the western part of the city. So all these things, all these great uh, areas is the territories that were captured by the Russians according to reliable sources. And according to pro-Russian sources, first the Russians captured the most western part of the city, including these farms. This is the industrial zone by the name of Zhukovsky. And later also, right before we start making the video, according to pro-Russian sources, they managed to reach the most northwestern point of the city, so this area. There are still no updates, no information regarding the uh, terricons and the landfills in the northern part and in the western part. We assume that these three terricons still remain under complete Ukraine control. So this is the situation in this area. Once again, the Russians managed to capture, according to summarizing everything, according to all these updates, the Russians managed to capture the city of Novogrodovka just for four days of clashes. Just to compare the city of uh, Novogrodovka before the beginning of the Russian assault operation had the population of 14,000 people and uh, the city of Novogrodovka is twice as less as the city of Avdiivka as but as for Novogrodovka um, there are no industrial zones uh, like the uh, the the coke plant in the northern part of Avdiivka there is one terricon uh, around Novogrodovka there are three terricons anyway summarizing everything the Russians were fighting um, uh, it took around uh, six months or even more to capture Avdeevka completely, but as for Novogrodovka, it took just four days for the Russians. Furthermore, the Russians didn't stop in this direction, and according to information we have, according to pro-Russian sources, the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to secure the village of Krasny Yar and to answer the village of Mikolaevka that located to the north of the Krasny Yar. Furthermore, according to information we have, the Russians managed to expand their positions in the west in direction basically the current distance between edge russian positions in mikolaev and mirnagrad is less than two kilometers so basically the beginning of the battle for mirnagrad has started in this area we have just two videos how the russians were attacking and destroying the ukrainian vehicles along the main supply road and basically this is the reason this is one of the reasons why the ukrainians lost the battle for the pokrovsk or not lost but are losing we we see every single day the russians publish significant number of geolocations and videos of how they were attacking and destroying the ukrainian vehicles uh, on the roads between the line of combat contact and the mainland and uh, uh, since the beginning of august 
most probably we haven't received even a single video that was published by the Ukrainians of how the Ukrainians were attacking and destroying the Russian vehicles. Something happened with Ukraine FPV drone forces, either the Ukrainians don't have enough of FPV drone uh, equipment or most of the Ukrainian FPV drone operators were redeployed from the Pokrovsk direction to the Kursk area or somewhere else. Now let's move to the south in Pokrovsk direction, we are talking about the city of Selidova. And first we are going to talk about the village of Kalinova. Uh, the Russian sources published the video how they managed to uh, establish complete control over this small settlement by raising the flag in the most central part. In this video we can see the Russian soldiers of 114th mechanized brigade of the armored forces of Russian Federation. As you can see they are moving uh, really freely along the main street of the village without having any risk uh, of being attacked by the Ukrainians by Ukraine FPV drones. So it seems that everything is so secured so that the front line is far from this area further in the southern direction and this episode of the video we see that the russian soldier was riding the building of course the building and the flag were geolocated and this took place exactly in this area based on this video most of the mappers have adjusted their maps in russian favor we did the same we added significant territories fields under complete russian control now let's talk about unconfirmed updates. According to information we have, the Russians managed to improve their positions and to enter the village of Mikolaevka, that located uh, in the eastern part of the Selidov agglomeration. So this information was confirmed by pro-Ukrainian mappers. Furthermore, according to information we have, the Russians managed to first, in the beginning of the day, by the beginning of the 27th of August, the Russians just entered the village of Memrik, and we have already discussed this in the, during the previous video. But during the day according to russian sources they managed to establish complete control over the village and to force the ukrainians to fall back from this territory so from now most likely tomorrow different mappers including pro-ukrainian will adjust their map in russian favor during the day we got just two videos of how the russians were fpv droning and attacking the ukrainian forces and in this video we can see that ukrainians were trying to evacuate and basically to run away from the village of memrik but they were uh, got by the russians and destroyed now let's discuss another important statement that was published by pro-Ukrainian sources. The Ukrainians are saying that uh, despite the fact that just uh, today we got the first reports that the Russians captured Mimrik and both Mimrik and the village of Mirinovce, this is the village of Marinovka, the Ukrainians are saying that uh, the Russians have already concentrated significant number of forces in these two villages. Once again, Marinovka, the city of Marinovka and the city of Mimrik. And the Ukrainians are saying that uh, after the Russians concentrated this such a big number of forces uh, probably this upcoming night or maybe in a day or in a two they will begin a full-scale operation towards the city of Selidova. The Russians are going to attack the city uh, trying to move through the uh, Terekon in the northern part. Furthermore, according to updates of pro-Ukraine mappers, most likely the Russians will continue advancing from Mikolaevka to the west in the central part of Selidova and most likely from Russian positions in memory the Russians are going to attack in Selido as well. So it is very important and this is probably the vital battle for the Pokrovsk direction. Not for the Pokrovsk as you can see, but for the city of Selidova. And if the Russians are able to establish complete control over the city of Selidova as fast as they manage to establish complete control over the city of Novogrodovka, then the Russians will be able to get the operational space. And this is very important because from this operational space, the Russians will be able to have uh, lots of options, lots of decisions where to move next. Because from the city of Selidova, the Russians can continue advancing further in the northwestern direction with the purpose to increase the same encirclement of power. Pokrovsk, and this is the first goal and the second goal is to get as close as possible to the railways between Pokrovsk itself and Dnipro and with the purpose to cut the railways and to ruin the Ukrainian logistic in this direction. Furthermore, the Russians uh, will be able after the fall of Selidova and most likely the Russians are planning to capture Selidova as fast as Novogrodovka, they will be able to move in the south in direction towards the village of Andreevka and in this case the Russians will try to encircle the Ukrainians in Kurahava and 
and to create a Kurahava cauldron. Let's talk about Kurahava. Now let's discuss the situation in this direction. This is the South Donetsk direction. According to information we have, the Russians managed to improve their positions in this direction as well. Today the Russians published the video of how they managed to raise the flag in the stronghold that uh, is located on the uh, intersection of the roads between Vadiana Salotka, Ugledar and Konstantinovka. This is obviously significant progress. Different mappers have already adjusted their maps in Russian favor and according to many mappers the road between the coal mine of the South Donbass and Konstantinovka itself is already in the complete Russian control. The Russians are regrouping right now. They are concentrating their forces and maybe and very likely uh, during the battle for Selidova or when the Russians will see how fast the battle for Selidova is uh, going the Russians may begin their offensive towards the village of Bogoyavlinka and Uspenovka. And with this the Russians most likely will try to defeat the Ukrainians completely in Kurahova direction to cut this artillery post this salient and to defeat the Ukrainians once and for all. But, but please, this operation, if the Russians are able to complete this operation, obviously will lead to complete defeat of the Ukrainians, not just in the Pakrovs direction, the South Donetsk direction, but everywhere starting from the Kupins area towards the Kherson. Now let's talk about Konstantinovka. During the day we got just one video and this video uh, we see how the Russians were entering the eastern part, the southeastern part of the city from the farms that they captured yesterday. We discussed the geolocations already in the previous video and in this video we can see how the Russians first bombed the Ukraine positions and then they launch FPV drones to clear the situation, to clear the area and after FPV drone did their job the Russians entered the territory with infantry and when the Russians captured the stronghold, they also raised the flag. So, based on this video, we have just adjusted this small part of uh, Konstantinovka, but once again, according to different mappers, currently the line of combat contact goes along this red line, and the, the Russians are already there. If the Russian Ukrainians lose Konstantinovka, Vadiana, Ugledar, and could the coal mines every single settlement along the TO524 road, this can lead to complete disaster of the armed forces of Ukraine. And now, of course, we have the question everybody have the question why the ukrainians suffer so many problems why the ukrainians can't hold the positions can't stabilize the area and uh, the sources are saying that probably this is uh, this situation is connected mainly connected with the situation in the kursk area and today we got additional report from the um, commander-in-chief sirsky he stated that russia transferred just 30 troops to uh, Kursk direction from Ukraine. This was stated by command by, by the commander in chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, General Sirsky. The Kursk operation uh, diverted a significant number of servicemen. At the moment, we can state that about 30,000 servicemen have already been transferred to the Kursk direction, and this number is growing. And also, he stated that uh, Sirsky was expecting um, that uh, the Russians would redeploy forces from. Uh, uh, the Pakrov's direction to the Kurs direction, but the Russians didn't do this. And according to him, he emphasized that the armed force of Russian Federation is trying to remove parts from other directions, and on the contrary, it is uh, increasing uh, its efforts in the Pakrovsky direction. So this uh, Sirsky was expecting one thing, but the Russians uh, start doing completely different situation. They increase the number of the forces on the Pakrov's direction, and the Russians are moving further. So this is official, uh, let's say, statement by pro-Ukrainian sources, by pro-Russian sources. You know that today we got very interesting information from Kiev, from Zelensky himself. Today Zelensky uh, made um, ultimatum to G7. Uh, Zelensky demanded G7 to give him, to give to Ukraine, 50 billion dollars. So this is a significant number, but this is not something new. The Ukraine received in the past a lot of money as well, but we have a lot of differences with this demand with the previous. According to Zelensky, he wants this money, these 50 billions, to be transferred on the territory to Ukraine, but without any obligations to, uh, let's say, to, um, uh, to answer the questions in the future. How the Ukrainians, how Zelensky himself, spend this money. Whether they send this money to military, whether they just stole this money, whether they bought a lot of apartments in London or whatever, what's anything else. The only important thing, you're giving us the money. This is not loan. This is not um, uh, like something like leasing. This is money you give us and forget about them. And this is very important because these 50 billions of dollars, as for me, um, uh, looks like blackmail. 
It's like blackmail. Zelensky every single day asked the Western countries to give him permission to begin bombing the territory of Russian Federation with a Western weapon, but still he hasn't received permission from the United States of America, from London and many, many other countries. And Zelensky decided to begin blackmail. And you know, Dipakrov's direction is also a part of blackmail. Because if you ask my opinion, I, I don't agree, I can't agree, I can't understand why the Ukrainians are falling back. It's not like about uh, the side or something like this. It's just from the technical and military perspective, it's impossible to fall back so fast on the direction where you have more or less reliable defense belt and significant number of strongholds. The only reason why the Ukrainians are falling back and withdrawing their positions from the across direction is attempt to blackmail the western countries and the united states of america and joe biden personally so there are still a lot of time until the end of the elections and zelensky began um, let's say losing the war losing the battle for pakrovsk because he wants money he wants money and he wants money for free and as and obviously obviously now, you remember we were talking about the tactics that Ukrainians are using, that Ukrainians send forces to the Kursk with the purpose to force the Russians to send forces there, and the Russians enforce their offensive operations to the Pakrovsk with the purpose to force the Ukrainians to send reinforcement back. So we were discussing about the situation just from perspective of two units, of two bodies, Ukraine and Russia. But telling the truth, in this uh, schema we have third body, and the third body is the United States of America. Because as for the United States of America, they don't like the situation uh, in the course direction because it's not something that was approved by them and also the United States of America don't like the situation in the Pakrovsk direction the situation that feed the United States of America requirements is the static uh, front line of combat contact and this uh, progress significant progress of uh, Russia can force the United States of America to become something like uh, rescue team they will be forced to become a rescue team. They will be forced to give Zelensky everything he needs just to stop this Russian progress before the president elections and before anything. So this most likely, I believe that the G7 will provide Zelensky his 50 billions. But the problem is that if the United States of America and the Western countries provide Zelensky money once, they will be forced to give him more, more and more because Zelensky will understand the weak point of the Western countries and Western countries has just one weak point, the loss and the defeat of Ukraine. They will never allow this to do. But if, uh, but from perspective of Russian victory, but not from perspective of Zelensky will do this uh, for a reason to get more money and to get more weapon. So everything is very complicated. Now let's move to the Tariesk direction. We have additional updates from this area as well. Uh, the different mappers have adjusted their maps and the pro-Ukraine mappers have colored the landfill in Russian favor, but we still haven't received any video that can confirm this. Furthermore, we got report from the 150th mechanized brigade where they were asking for help. They were asking Ukrainian lawyers to help them and to, uh, uh, let's say, force and to pre increase the pressure on the Ukrainian authorities and uh, to that can s evacuate them from this uh, hell because they're saying they have no support, no weapon, no reinforcements, no reserves. He's saying that they 60% of the personnel in his uh, company or in his platoon is already 300, so they are wounded. So they can't find and most likely they will be forced to fall back or to give up the risk very soon. Furthermore, we got additional report from Konstantinovka and according to information we have the Ukrainians began evacuation they announced the um, forced evacuation which means that most likely Tariyas is going to fall very soon and then the Ukrainians will try to slow down the Russians in this area but most likely they will not be able to do this everything depends of course on the United States of America and the number of money they send to Kiev if United States of America will begin uh, sending money the Ukrainians will be able to slow down the Russian progress if they don't Ukrainians will lose obviously now let's uh, talk about the Kursk direction where there, there are still very heavy clashes but we have lots of very interesting changes on the ground. Uh, first, uh, according to information we have during the previous 24 hours, the Russians managed to destroy up to two HIMARS systems and we have uh, the videos uh, of the objective control. In this video we can see the HIMARS system that launched the missiles on the territory of Kursk and then was returning back but the Russians discovered the parking place and destroyed the HIMARS as a result of Iskander strike. 
Now let's talk about the line of combat contact. As for the eastern direction, we have adjusted the map back in Ukrainian favor because the, after some mappers adjusted this territory and colored Borky as a contested area, uh, two days in a row we've been receiving updates about how the Russians were FPV droning the Ukrainians on the territory of this village. And based on these uh, videos and number of videos, we have adjusted the map back in Ukrainian favor. So most likely the Ukrainians have a strong control over the settlement. As for the Surja, we haven't received anything special. The only important video is that the Russians began bombing and attacking the Surja itself. So for the first time, we start receiving updates and geolocations that the Ukrainians have strong control inside of the city and that the Russians are forced to begin bombing uh, their own cities. So uh, it's like the first time when the Russians began bombing the cities that uh, was a part of old Russia. We're not talking about small villages. We're talking about more or less big cities like Valchansk, like Sudra, um, uh, like uh, Lipci and many, many others. Now let's talk about the northern direction. There are very heavy clashes uh, around the, the Cherkaskaya Parechnaya. But uh, as for the geolocations, in this area we continue receiving lots of videos from the Russian side of how they were hunting and destroying the Ukrainian vehicles, another batch of uh, personal carriers and light vehicles that were destroyed as a result of Russian FPV drone strikes. The Ukrainians suffer significant losses in armored vehicles in this direction as well, and sooner or later they will be uh, cut completely uh, and will no longer have the fuel of war. We're talking about machines, we are talk we are going to talking about cars and personal carriers. And without this type of equipment, the Ukrainians will not be able to continue moving further and they will not be able to supply and support their forces on the line of combat contact. Another vehicle was destroyed as you can see as a result of fire. As for Malay Lokne, during the previous 24 hours, we haven't received anything. As for Korinyo, according to different mappers, the Ukrainians managed to, uh, the Russians managed to restore control over the village of Zhuravli, the Russians managed to improve their positions in Olgovka, and the Russians managed to restore control over the southeastern part of Korinyo. The Ukrainians uh, retreat, and uh, now they try to regroup and to concentrate their forces in the forests between uh, the cities and villages. The Russians, of course, see everything, and during the previous 24 hours we got a significant number of videos of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the concentrations of Ukrainian forces. Currently I'm not sure whether the Russians are go whether the Ukrainians are going to um, resume their attempts to attack Korinyov itself with the purpose to force the Russians to fall back. Most likely the Ukrainians are no longer going to attack in this area. Most likely the Ukrainians are going to move in the western direction because the majority of geolocations we got exactly from this foothold. Another video of a Russian bombing of Ukraine positions along the three lines uh, where the Ukrainians tried to concentrate forces before another jump, another attack towards the Russian positions. And the uh, lots of videos, a lot of geolocations we got on the road between the village of Snagest, Bechava and Sinyak. And uh, the Russian sources published the video how they were FPV droning the Ukrainians along the road, Ukrainian vehicles, personal carriers, uh, attack machines and so on, which confirms that Ukrainians are getting closer and closer and most likely during the next few days, if the Ukrainians still have strength and forces, they will try to cut this artillery pocket. So they will try to capture the villages of Poldetekski, Sergeyevka, Elizavetovka, Sinyak and Troitska, because this is already something like a cauldron, something like a pocket that is very uh, not so um, difficult to capture by the Ukrainians if they have enough of forces. So we'll see during the next few days if they have enough of forces, they're gonna do this. A little bit in the south and direction, the same area, the Russians discovered another HIMARS that was supporting the Ukraine offensive and as a result of Iskander strike, that HIMARS system was destroyed. So as you can see, the Ukrainians are not planning to remove forces from the Kurs direction. They're waiting for the United States of America reaction and obviously the deep the deeper the Russians are able to get inside of the territory of Ukraine, the deeper uh, cities like Silidova, uh, Pakrovsk, Kurakhova the Russians are able to capture, uh, the more chances, more and more chances that Western countries, including the United States of America and um, in London will allow the Ukrainians either to use Western weapons, long-range missiles, everything they have, and more chances that Zelensky will receive additional money. So, telling the truth, we can make the following conclusion. That the Russians sacrificed uh, the Kursk direction in favor of development of their offensive and significant progress in the Pakrovsk direction, and the Ukrainians sacrificed the Pakrovsk direction in favor to get more money, more weapon, more of everything from 
from the Western countries. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.